Hey guys, it's Alan, Front Page Fab, and we're in the shop tonight working on a lawn roller. Let's get in the shop and build part something. Part two of the series. Uh, I do. I did get all the steel. I've got my pillow block bearings. Uh, we've got everything to get this thing finished up. But if you follow me on Facebook, you'll know that last week I had to take the, the weekend off uh, and not. I didn't make a, movie, a video for you. And I apologize for that, but I feel like it was a good excuse. So my daughter and son-in-law down, and they're down closer to Evansville, Indiana, uh, blessed us with a beautiful baby granddaughter. She's just, just, just beautiful. And I know I'm partial because she's my granddaughter and my first grandchild. But, you know, it's, man, she, she just has me by the heart. Oh, she's... <laughs> Uh, it, it's, it's amazing, amazing feeling. And I'm so happy for, uh, my daughter and son-in-law. Um, I know they're going to do a great job being parents and, and, uh, and they, they've got a, they've got a fun, but rocky ride ahead of them as any of you parents that are, you know, looking in the same situation I am as a grandparent, you know, but we're just so thankful that she's healthy. I didn't care. I had many people ask me, do you want a boy or do you want a girl? And I'm like, I really don't care. I just want them to be healthy because if they're healthy. That, that's all that matters, period. All that matters. And if they, if she was born on, you know, with, with a defect of something, so what? She's still my granddaughter and, and we're not going to love her any less. But She's born healthy. Um, she's doing awesome. Um, and uh, I just can't be more thankful to God for, for blessing our family with this beautiful baby girl. Um, it, it, there's just nothing more to say that I can say on that. Um, I, I'm a, I, I have to share a couple pictures. I, you know, grandparents are right. Got to do it. So uh, we'll start out. Well, I'm going to show you a couple pictures of my granddaughter. Her name is Hallie Dene, and uh, she was seven pounds, four ounces, I think, five ounces, and 19 inches long. She's just, just, just beautiful. Um, and Grandpa can't wait to get down there and spoil the dickens out of her. And you know anybody that knows me. Uh, if you've known my family, you know, I, I was blessed with two girls of my own. And just because they were girls doesn't mean they can't do the same things the boys did. So we went four, they had four wheelers. We went four wheeling. We'd go to Tennessee. We'd go to Attica to the Badlands. We'd go over to, um, on the east side of Indiana. I, I forget the name of that place, but. We went there a few times. I wasn't overly impressed with it, but anyway, we went there. But the important thing is we did it as a family. I was blessed um, to come into a little bit of money and I was able to buy some four wheelers for my, both my girls, my wife and myself. And, and we just enjoyed them. My mom and dad had them. And so we'd just trailer them down on my big trailer. We'd go to Tennessee. We just had a ball. Um, you know, my oldest daughter, she wanted to drive my Poland truck, so she got to drive my Poland truck a little. Um, just because they're girls doesn't mean a thing. Girls are, are just as capable as the boys, and, and sometimes even more capable. Um, it's just the way it is. So, so knowing that and knowing me, there is no doubt in my mind that 
God willing, when Hallie gets old enough, there's going to be a junior dragster if she wants it in her future. So she can go to the track with Papa and we can have a, a, an awesome time and, and my son-in-law and we can just have a blast. Um, but if she doesn't want that, that's cool. I know she's going to learn how to shoot. She's going to learn how to hunt. Um, she's, she's going to learn all that. And like I said, just because she's a girl doesn't mean a thing. Um, she can enjoy it just the same as, as uh, us guys do. So, so that's, that's what's been going on. And then in the midst of that, while we were down there, I ended up coming down with a pretty nasty cold. Thank goodness it wasn't COVID, but it was a nasty cold. And I'm still trying to get over it right now. But uh, I just decided it's time to get in the shop. Uh, we had a little snow, so um, as you'll see coming up here, uh, I had to go out and move a little bit. I did a little bit yesterday morning before I went to work. Um, and then we got another half inch or so overnight and this morning. So I went out finished it up and then plowed the back driveway here to the shop, which I hadn't had a chance to do. So, yeah, so that's coming up next in the video clip. And, and then we got a lawn roller to do. And so what the goal today is, is I got to put the middle support in it. And I'll probably just tack weld that in place. And then we'll move the roller back. And then I got to get to cutting steel. Uh, so I can get the frame done, I uh, get my shaft done. Uh, the shaft, I ended up ordering a 12 foot piece of it. Uh, you never know, I'll have some, I'll have half of it left over probably. So that can make another little project at some point down the road, who knows. But uh, anyway, um, we will have some steel left over for the next project that's coming down the pike as soon as I can get this long roller out. So stick around, stay tuned. Uh, I 
apologize. I forgot to turn the camera back on after I rolled the tube to get it where I needed it. But what I did was I ground off the dirt there and the rust. And then I put my square in. And used a couple of welding magnets. And uh, uh, squared up the thing. And then I put a couple tack welds on it, uh, a couple top and bottom there, or top and bottom. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and start cutting steel, and hopefully all that lines up right there all the way through. And uh, the shaft will go through, and then we just put the end cap on this end. And uh, I'll probably go ahead and hit that with a flap wheel again, just since it's been a little bit. And uh, yeah, and then we'll get about have the at least have the tube done. Um, so I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'll get the uh, sawzall set up, ready to cut steel. Bear with me. All right, we got the tube moved. And uh, now I got to get my horizontal bandsaw set up. Now you're going to see that uh, a few years ago I needed one. So. I bought a Harbor Freight one, and uh, so far it's it's been a good saw. I just have really one one gripe, just just one major. Well, that was my bad. I forgot to lock it down. Okay, well, I'm embarrassed. So guys, there is a, a key right here that you put in and you lock it down. <sighs> Hopefully I didn't break anything. So now you'll notice with that pin in there, it don't go nowhere. All right. So I got to turn this thing around now. And I think Um, my sticks are, we cut them down to 12 feet so they could fit on my trailer. And I'm going to need should have got my big tape out. I'm at 60 inches here, so that's 5 foot. So if I go, if I cut that shaft exactly in half at 6, That leaves me plenty sticking out there. Six inches on each side. So I'm going to cut this at 72 inches. So that'll be half of the pipe I have. All right. Okay, guys. So here's my complaint about the Harbor Freight horizontal bandsaw. It's made for midgets. You see how short that is? I'm six foot three, hitting there. Now, that by itself isn't terrible, but then you buy the, the roller that they sell, and you will notice I have this thing as low as it will go. This hits about right here, somewhere in this area. 
this doesn't go low enough. So what I have to do is I have to raise it up. I have to get this thing raised up some. Now, these things right here I made for my camper, four by fours with uh, two by sixes on top. And um, they work great, they'll get it up I think high enough. So what I have to do, let's put that down. Oops, other side. And then I gotta raise it up, get this side on it. And the trick here, when you're by yourself, is I gotta get, I gotta pick this up and slide that in and not knock the whole thing over all at the same time. So let's see how it goes here. Mm. Okay, there's that side, and that's the worst side. All right, there. So now what the goal here is to get close. I'll get this adjusted somewhat close. I think I got some lighter weight tube steel here that I can use. Oh yeah. yeah. Let's start with that. Needs to come up just a hair more. A hair too much. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Pretty close. Close enough to get things rolling. What we're trying to do is set that up so that uh, we're we're the same height as, as the floor of the cutter. And uh, that, will, uh, that will make sure that whenever I'm doing my cut, I'm getting a square cut instead of a wonky cut, cut on an angle. All right. Now let's see if we can get, uh, pick up this big old hunk of steel. Holy cow. That, my friends, is a piece of steel. a shaft. We know we're going to go six foot and uh, six foot is it out here.
All right. She got the gold mine, and I got the shaft. I ought to be in Nashville. In case you don't recognize that line, that was a line from uh, Jerry Reed, Smokey and the Bandit. All right, let me get something to mark my where I'm going to cut. All right, now I'm just curious how much am I going to have left? Well, that's going to work out nice. I'll just a half inch over six foot. Cool. So by doing this, my tube is uh, 60 inches wide and uh, my shaft will be six foot wide. So what that does is that gives me an extra six inches on each side sticking out for my um, okay. for my um, for the pillow block bearings to ride on and the frame. Now, what I'm the way I'm thinking about doing this, the, this is quarter inch thick wall tubing, so it's good heavy duty tubing. I could just make like a U, but what I'm thinking is eventually uh, I might want to make a frame over the top to add weight. So my thought is to just go ahead and make a box frame on it. And that way, if I ever want to, I can just go right over the top, make put a basket there, or put something to hang some weights on, and it will be golden. This dude weighs, I don't know what it weighs. Um, I do know that I cut 18 inches off of it, and I couldn't pick it up by myself. I had to get my loader to uh, stand it up, and, uh, uh, my, and, and carry it. My original thought was I was just going to pick it up and throw it in the back of the Ranger, and yeah, my my uh, <laughs> I changed my mind real fast. All right, let's get this pulled out. I'll get it close, and uh, then we'll fine tune it here in a minute. We're going to be somewhere there. That right there looks good. Okay. We're ready to start cutting. And, you know... Measure twice, cut once is the old adage. So that's what we're going to do. Six foot, we're good. Just a smidge over because I just hooked onto the blade and pulled it. So we are golden.
I know that my tube here, this is exactly 60 inches long. So, and I cut my, my uh, bar, round bar, uh, to 72 inches long. So that means I have six inches sticking out on both sides. Now, I think my plan is going to be to to have the uh, a little bit, maybe maybe an inch sticking out past the um, inch of shaft sticking out past the pillow block bearing. So let me grab the pillow block bearing, uh, measure the width of that. Okay. So here's my here's my pillow block bearing. And the ins it's about an inch and seven eighths. So I need an inch and seven eighths, so we'll call it two inches on each side for that to ride on. Okay, so Go. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add on my 60. I'm going to add two inches just for clearance. And then I'm going to add two inches for the bearing width. And then another inch just to have an inch of shaft sticking out. Just that way, if I ever need to make some change or something. five and a half inches on each side. So if I have 60 inches plus five and a half, so that's plus 11 inches. So I want 71 inches is what we want. Got that? 71 inches. All right, let's get to measuring. All right, so the way I'm going to measure this, get my rag handy here. So I've got to measure, let me get this out of my way more. We want, what did I say? So we want 71 inches. So usually the first thing I do is find my 71, or my, my number throw a mark there and then I get my rag twice cut once. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to double check myself. So I said 71, which is here. All right, now I got to get my Double check some things here. So on our inside measurement, inside to inside, I am five feet. Uh, we'll 
we'll call it seven and a half inches. So, we know we wanted, so if I take that seven and a half inches, because I'm, I'm subtracting my five feet, my 60 inches. So, we know we need So that's seven and a half inches divided by two. So seven divided by two is three and a half plus a quarter is uh, three and three quarters per side of stick out. So that's good. That gives me a little room in case, uh, just, just in case. So three and a half inches. So I think we're good there. Uh, shoot, I left my glove over there. All right, so now, now that I have my mark, I'm gonna bring that piece of steel forward. Should lower that down. All right, first thing I gotta do, I gotta draw this up. See where my blade's at. Cut on the outside of that line. All right, so I moved it just a little too much. All right, now double check one more time what we got. So where that angle is up against the uh, tape or up against the cutting edge. Puts me at five feet, seven and a half. All right, we're good. Okay. Got that done, we're tight. All right, now we start, we're off cutting. All right, so you see how I did that? I'm not going to bore you with uh, just sitting here watching watching me watch the cut the bandsaw cut steel. So we'll pick back up here as soon as I get all this. Steel. Okay guys, 
so I've got this staged here. Now what I did uh, to, to make sure, the way I work it, to make sure everything's the same, is I stack the one that I just cut, my good one, on top of the one that needs cut. See, I got it all lined up right there, all nice and pretty. And then I bring it down here, and I line up everything right here on the blade. I make sure my blade's not bowing out. It's nice, just kissing that top steel there. So once that's done, she's ready to cut. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get the cut made. That'll take care of the two long pieces. Then we gotta cut the two, the, the side pieces. And then we gotta make a tongue and a brace. So that's what we're gonna be working on, guys. Um, I gotta finish that up. I'm not gonna bore you with it. You saw one piece of steel cut and you saw how I set it all up. You've seen the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it here and I'll finish cutting. And um, then on the next video, when I get back in the shop here, we will, we gotta get that shaft slid through, make sure that's all gonna line up right so I can get the other end cap weld stuck in there and welded in. And uh, then we, once I have that done, it's gonna go fast. Because I'll have all the steel cut, just a matter of getting it jigged and squared and start sticking it. So, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. We got a lot more content coming. Get this roller finished. We got a, another project coming that I've been kind of hinting around about. Uh, it's going to make working in the field easier. I'll, I'll just leave you there. So uh, thanks for watching again, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.